Hi, Micro Puncher here. Over the last couple of months, I made a whole bunch of videos, pretty nice videos, um, using my microscope here, and I put water samples and uh, uh, onion cells and all sorts of things under the microscope. And today, I just want to show you the most uh, interesting and maybe also the nicest video clips that I made. If you want to see the full videos, I'm putting I've put a link uh, down below into the description, and we're gonna get started right away with this little guy here on my right side which is a small copepod which I found in a water sample. Well and this here this is a so-called uh, copepod it's a small crustacean well normally they move around uh, very quickly but this one here well this has uh, ha has a problem um, its organs are still moving but it's already quite ill because it's being attacked by thousands of tiny bacteria so-called spirilla these are spiral shaped uh, bacteria and they move a little bit like a corkscrew. And just a few minutes later I saw that uh, the little copepod flipped on its belly and um, it died. Well that's uh, the circle of life. Well, in the video that I'm going to show you now is actually one of my most watched videos. Uh, it shows a small single celled organism called a paramecium. And uh, this video, however, got quite a few people upset uh, because this paramecium got stuck between the slide, the microscope slide and the cover glass. And it could not escape from there. So consequently, after a few minutes, it died and it popped open and all of its cell organelles were released and uh, were spreading around uh, all over the place. Well, again here, not a very nice sight, but again, that is what happens in nature. But not far away, um, another cell started to disintegrate and uh, people did not get so much upset about that. I don't know why. And it too spilled out all of its cells contents. But the good thing here is, is the following, that all of the, these parts, all of these uh, cellular components are going to be reused. They serve as food for other microorganisms. Well now, uh, enough of that. Uh, let's look at something more positive now. This here, for example, is an algae. There are green chloroplasts uh, inside it, and their responsibility is, is to do photosynthesis. But uh, this is now time-lapse, and if you can look carefully, then you are going to see that they will move around. This is called cytoplasmic streaming, because cells, they are alive. And of course, if they do not move on their own, then at least the parts, the components inside the cells, they will move. And then, of course, uh, there are the diatoms. Many of them, I found a lot of them. And they are quite unique because they have a cell wall which is made of silica, which is similar to glass. They come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes and many of them move in a so-called in a gliding manner across the slide. And well, some others again, they are quite lazy because what they do is, is they do not move on their own, but they simply attach to another diatom or to another organism and this carries them now along well, what would a water sample be without ciliates? These single-celled organisms can grow in large numbers. And here, that's a close-up of a paramecium, and I added a small droplet of milk to the cell. And this helps me see the movement of the water, and the little dots that you see in the liquid, these are the fat droplets of the milk, and they help me see much better how the water flows around the paramecium. And when we look deep into an onion cell, then we can of course uh, see the nucleus there. Um, that's the round structure right in the middle of the video. But look carefully um, um, around the nucleus, there are little dots moving around. These are little vesicles and they are pulled along inside the cell and they carry substances. So an onion cell, even though an onion does not look like it's alive on the outside, there is lots of movement going on here. This here is Elodia. Elodia is a water plant and in the middle you have an expanding oxygen bubble. 
it's expanding because uh, the plant cells, uh, they produce oxygen and this oxygen builds up. And inside the cells of the LOD of the water plant, uh, they're chloroplasts. These are these little green structures um, and they too move around here in time lapse. A water sample contains so many different organisms, it's almost uh, unbelievable. This is Vorticella. Vorticella, the, they are stalked little uh, protists and uh, they contract very quickly when they encounter an obstacle. And as a matter of fact, so quickly that you cannot even see that they're contracting. They snap back and they contract. There are many beautiful algae in a water sample. Um, this one here, for example, um, is an algae. You know that because, uh, again, um, it has these green chloroplasts in the center and they're just floating around. Um, and uh, what they do is, is that they do photosynthesis and as a matter of fact, they constitute a significant portion of the plankton in the water. So they do not only produce oxygen, but uh, they also serve um, as food for other organisms. And look carefully, right in the center there, can you also see those moving dots there? Yeah, so you, so it's also alive. Pediastrum, that's also an, an algae and it's in a colony. And uh, there are individual cells that make up uh, this star-shaped algae here. And some cells, like this amoeba here, is able to change its shape. Uh, it's uh, moving along the slide of the microscope uh, and inside it there is a diatom. Look carefully, right? Yeah, so um, as it's moving along, it's engulfing and eating up whatever comes in its way and that's how it's scavenging the environment for food. Uh, it's moving along by changing its shape. And Iolosoma, that is a worm, a tiny worm around three millimeters in length uh, that I also found in a water sample. They um, are quite uh, flexible in the sense that uh, when you compress them, they go back to their original form. I made a video on this, uh, just uh, check the links below. And uh, they also have a remarkable ability to regenerate. So I once uh, chopped them apart into several pieces and then the different pieces, they continued to live on. Let's look again at some onion cells. These are the cells of red onion. And uh, what I did is I treated them first with salt water and then with uh, distilled water. And look how they swell and how they pop open. Did you just see that? Yeah, the cells, uh, they pop open because of the water pressure and the cells contents are spilled out. You can see how they swell and then they pop open and the red pigment is uh, spilled out. Let's have a look at it again here. Just look at the cell here and boom, and it popped open and the cell's contents spill out. Lots of fascinating things to see. Well, that's it again. I hope you liked it. Well, if you did, uh, please do consider subscribing. And I also want to uh, advertise a little bit my other YouTube channel that I have, where I give a whole bunch of microscopy advice to those people who are interested uh, in microscopes and in amateur microscopy, everything microscopy related. I also have a web shop, uh, an affiliate web shop. Uh, I also put the link below. So if you want to buy some microscope accessories, microscope parts, whatever, do also check out that uh, web shop. I wish you all the best. Happy micro hunting as always. And do visit again and see you around next time. Bye bye.